And a delayed good Monday to you, the 11th day of uh, May 2020. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley and an auspicious start to this program and to this day. Um, it is uh, day number 49 of the Stay Home, Stay Healthy uh, protocol. We're on a tape delay basis, by the way. It's a technical thing. You don't need to know about that. We do need to know about what's going on today. And we got a lot going on today, weather-wise. It's a transition day. Beautiful weekend. Didn't hit 80. Came close. Didn't hit 80. Got to 78 degrees on Saturday and 79 on Sunday. Came close. Didn't get to 80. Haven't hit 80 degrees since September uh, 7th of last year. We got up to 85, but we haven't been to the 80s since then. We were hoping to do that over the weekend. That didn't happen. Forecast details are coming up, but we're all over the place weather-wise this week. Uh, we have your latest news headlines. We got sports to get to. We got the obscure holiday today in history. Uh, everyone is entitled to my minority's opinion. And the conversation in the back half of the show uh, is going to be with Tom Knees. Tom Knees, of course, is the executive director of Serve Wenatchee Valley. We had a chance to visit with Tom via Skype from his office in downtown Wenatchee. We taped that on Friday. We'll air it for you later on this morning in the back half of the hour. It is 55 degrees. Let's take you around the valley. With our cameras, see what Megan has in store for us. Of course, the cross camera always begins our festivities. It's a mixture of clouds and sun right now. It's mild. It's 55 degrees outside of our studios. Uh, another mild day today. We'll be above normal. We'll be about 75 degrees after uh, the 78 and 79 degree temperatures we hit over the weekend. And then the temperature is going to drop like a rock tomorrow. And the best thing is some badly needed rain with this active weather. We could get some showers uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and we need the rain, as you well know, but a beautiful view of the Wenatchee Valley as we begin another week, day 49 of the Stay Home, Stay Healthy protocol. Camera number two. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> that's the Manson Water Tower looking up, apparently. Okay, that's cool. So somewhere down there is Lake Chelan. That's a nice view of the clouds up in Manson. It looks pretty much the same in the Chelan Valley as it does down here in the Wenatchee Valley, a mixture of clouds uh, and sun, and that's what we're going to have today. It'll be a tug of war between the clouds and the sun. It'll be partly sunny skies before we cloud up for the majority of the week. It's going to be fairly cloudy all week long. Wednesday, a couple of sun breaks. Beautiful day on Friday. We'll get to those details in just a minute. Camera three is a shot of Megan did it again. I the um, uh, Tom Water. Yeah, hey, I got that one right. Good morning to our uh, friends in the Upper Valley, up in the Leavenworth area, from our Tom Water. Canyon camera right before you enter into the Tumwater. If we put a camera in the Tumwater Canyon, there's really not a lot to see. Wenatchee River is running high, of course, as it should be. The Wenatchee River High, the Columbia River High. Uh, keeping a close eye on the Okanagan River at Tenasket and the Stahican River at Stahican. They, they could be up near flood stage by the middle of the week with the combination of the warm temperatures, the snow melt, and the rain we are expecting. Not big rain, but just enough rain. Camera number four is a shot of Billy Goat, Bill E. Goat, U.S. of A. Good morning, Okanagan County. And that's pulled back about as far back as we can get it pulled back from that view, that spectacular view. Uh, I don't know wh where we are on the Metau River. I'm, I'm assuming it's high. Obviously, with the Columbia High and the Wenatchee High, I'm assuming that the Metau River is running a little on the high and cold side. I just It's an assumption. I haven't been up there, but it's a pretty safe assumption. We're in the middle of May, so... That's normally what we get. Good view from Billy Goat up in Okanagan County. And that's a good way to start our Monday. And let's go ahead. We have a couple of slides to show to you from the National Weather Service. First of all, mild spring means mountain snow melt, which means high water with temperatures uh, still in the 70s today before it cools down uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, so rivers are going to be near full bank by this week. We're keeping a close eye on the Okanagan River at Tenasket. The flood stage for the Okanagan River is 15 feet. It's expected to be about 14 feet by noon on Wednesday. The Stahican River <clears throat> at Stahican, the flood stage there is at 24 feet. They're expecting the Stahican to be at 22 feet by midday on Wednesday. So there you go. It's always a concern this time of the year. We've, you know, especially the Okanagan has had some flooding issues over the last decade or so, but that's part, of, that's part and parcel of living here. And also, it's, as I mentioned before, it's going to be quite active. Active weather all week long. Once we get through today, today is going to be the quietest day, and then Friday looks great. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we get a little bit of everything. It's going to be a little rainy, going to be cooler temperatures, uh, maybe an afternoon thunderstorm at some locations. Uh, if there is an afternoon thunderstorm, of course, the downpours would be quite heavy. We're not expecting anyone here. We're expecting more like 
scattered showers and scattered rain here for the Wenatchee Valley. But at this time of the year, you can't roll anything out. The weather is usually active in the middle of May. Thank you to the National Weather Service for bringing those to you. And uh, from Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, who gives your home a hug, here's what we're looking at for the seven-day forecast. We're looking at uh, a mixture of clouds and sun today. Clouds are probably going to get the best of it. We'll get up to about 75 degrees, a little bit of a wind, a west wind about 5 to 14 miles an hour. Uh, the afternoon will be the wind as highest, right around 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon is when the wind will be at its most intense, but 14 miles an hour, that really ain't much. Uh, tonight, slight chance of some light rain, 55 or 54 for the overnight low. A little bit of light rain, there's about a 30% chance of that. Now, the chance of rain goes up to 60% on Tuesday, and quite a bit of cloud cover, and you can see it a lot cooler, only 64 is all we're going to get to on Tuesday. Our normal afternoon high is right around 70 degrees for the Wenatchee Valley. We could use the rain and hopefully we will get some on Tuesday. Tuesday night, chance of rain hovers at right around 50%. Most of the rain, if it comes at all on Tuesday night, will be in the early evening hours. It should taper off overnight, 50 for the overnight low. Party cloudy with a chance of rain on Wednesday. <clears> high <throat> of about 70 degrees, 46 for the overnight low on Wednesday night. Thursday, slight chance of showers, partly sunny. I have about 69. Good looking Friday, but don't get used to it. Gobs a good, good sunshine Friday and a high of 75. And then we go right back to the mixed bag. Saturday, partly sunny in 77, 73 with lots of clouds. The best chance of measurable rain is really on Sunday. If the, if the models hold true, they're pretty confident that we are going to get a pretty good dose of rain on Sunday. And again, as I mentioned before, we need it. We need it. We're way behind our, uh, our yearly rain totals for this time of the year. So we're kind of really everywhere. Today's the transition day, and then we have clouds and a good chance of rain, and then clouds and sun and a slight chance of rain, and then clouds and sun and a slight chance of rain, and lots of sun and lots of rain. It's, we're everywhere uh, from Mother Nature's perspective. But again, it's the middle of May, and that's just, this is something that we're used to living here in North Central Washington. Going to take a break at eight minutes after the hour and come back with your news. You're watching Wake Up Financial Valley Monday edition on the NCW Life Channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I am a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you will love having midwifery care. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, and this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. Join us for Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This former police sergeant is plugged into not only the world of the streets, he's an actor and connoisseur of the arts. So join Mike and his guests for, well, Street Talk and Other Stuff. Mondays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30. It's Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This is Caitlin Hedershe, the producer of the NCW Life magazine. Each week, I'm bringing you a look behind the scenes of the faces, places, and events that make North Central Washington the place we call home. Tune in every weekday for an in-depth look at a new topic each week. From local artists in their studios to businesses breaking barriers that might surprise you and everything in between. Join me on the NCW Life magazine right here on the NCW Life channel. We're back at 11 minutes after the hour. We have a mixture of clouds and sun and 55 degrees, mid 70s today with a mixture of clouds and sun. And then we have clouds and a little bit of rain and then clouds and a little bit of rain and then sunshine and then clouds and a little bit of rain. Active is the word that we're going to use for the weather. And at 10 minutes after the hour, here's is making headlines. An East Wenatchee man was charged last week with first degree child assault over injuries and hospitalized a five week old baby. Douglas County deputies arrested 35 year old Tyler Vance 
Metcalf after a child abuse investigation that began when the child was injured. This happened back on March 28th at his home on Nelson Place. Police say the baby suffered a broken shin bone, a skull fracture, and multiple broken ribs consistent with child abuse. Metcalf allegedly told investigators that the child fell off a bed. Prosecutors charged him on Thursday. He remains uh, at the Okanagan County Jail on a half million dollars bail. Fish and Wildlife Authorities are looking into the apparent poaching of a black bear found about 10 days ago in the Lake Wenatchee area. Sergeant Dan Klump is with the State uh, uh, Washington with the State with the State Department of Wildlife Enforcement. He said there's a reward for anybody who has information that can lead to a conviction. Uh, the approximate location I will say up uh, the White River area. It was a mature older black bear. As far as the sex, I uh, wasn't conclusive on that, uh, but this bear was a was a bigger, older one. There were trophy-like items taken off the animal, and I don't want to say specifically what because of the investigation. Bear seasons in our area are in the fall. We don't uh, really have any spring bear hunts locally. Just really encourage the public, if somebody's aware of this, to steer us in the right direction to please call. Clum says the bear car carcass may have been there for quite some time, a couple of weeks anyway, before it was actually found. There is a reward for anybody with information that leads to a conviction. Uh, that award could range anywhere from $300 to $1,000 or more. Grant PUD reopened their boat launches in most of its 20 recreational facilities along the Columbia River at noon on Friday. The reopening does not include visitor centers, campgrounds, and most of the Crescent Bar area. The PUD, of course, shut down the boat launches and recreational areas back on March 27th after the state closed its parks and lands in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The state reopened its parks on Tuesday. Now, at Crescent Bar, the golf course, the beaches, the marina, the fuel services, they're still closed. The PUD says those activities attract a bunch of people and that makes it difficult to maintain safe social distancing. Most other golf courses, of course, in the state reopened Last Tuesday, the PUD said only a minimal number of restroom facilities will be open at its sites. In a video on Friday morning, East Wenatchee Mayor Jerry Lee Crawford talked with City Project Development Manager Tom Wachholder about how the Roundabout Project underway to Highland Drive and 3rd Street Southeast. It is uh, on schedule. In fact, it uh, may be completed in half the time they expected. The original project schedule that was submitted on this, it had approximately three months of a duration. But because of the COVID-19 situation, we were able to give um, the contractor in an additional week closure due to the, the, you know, fewer disruptions to, to the motorists out there because of less people getting out on the roadway. And as a result, the construction schedule went from a three-week, th excuse me, three-month schedule to a month and a half. Yeah, that's great. It'll be nice to wrap it up and have it over with. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, everyone's well aware. Prior to this improvement, navigating that intersection was difficult. Left turning movements associated with north and southbound Highline Drive were very difficult movements to make. So following this improvement, the level of service would be greatly increased at that intersection. Yeah, the safety concern that we noticed there before yeah. and the amount of traffic going in, uh, this will greatly improve that. And I think people will appreciate the, the safety element there and being able to make a, a more timely uh, Cross that intersection more timely. So, yeah, 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 that's great. Yeah, and one uh, one additional aspect too is prior to this improvement, uh, there were no pedestrian crosswalks, so we'll be addressing pedestrian crosswalks along Third Street Southeast. Okay. Well, safety is yeah. a priority for the city, so I'm glad that we're we're focused on that. Yeah. As we're uh, all learning, there are lots of different ways to wear a protective mask wrong when you're out in public, but only one way. To do it right, Cascade Medical Center in Leavenworth asked one of their registered nurses to walk you through the best mask techniques and shared this video with us. Um, Rachel has the mask with just a strip of cloth and some rubber bands for the ears. And my mask is um, a strip of cloth that has tie-ins on the top and the bottom. So the first thing that we're going to do um, to put on our masks is wash our hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. So the basic function of a mask is there's a clean side and there's a dirty side. And Rachel's clean side is the white portion of the mask and your dirty side is the printed portion. So you have it um, laid out correctly on your lap there where the dirty side is down and the clean side is up. So what you want to do is take your mask, just like that by the ear loops, 
place it up against your face so that the strip covers your nose and the mouth best that it can. Loop it around your ears in the back. There you go. And then adjust your mask so that the top is over your nose and the bottom is the best you can under your chin, or at least covering your mouth. There you go. Okay. So that looks like it looks like it fits pretty well. Okay. Try nodding your head up and down. Good, it doesn't move too much side to yeah. side. Looks good too. Staying put. So staying put, so that's great. This, the edges of your mask on the side look pretty close to your face. So that is also good because it will prevent droplets from coming out the sides of your mask as well. Okay. So that mask actually looks like it fits you really nicely. Okay. And then the mask that I have on now or that I'm starting to put on are with the ties. And how you wanna put the ties on is the top tie should be placed on first, and then the bottom tie should be placed on second. So now my mask fits me well, and now my hands are clean. I'm gonna adjust it how I want it. And then I'm gonna move my head up and down side to side and make sure that it fits comfortable too for an extended period of time. And I can breathe easily in this so that I know that I'm, I'm going to be safe and comfortable going into the grocery store or anywhere in the community where you feel like you're going to be within six feet um, of another person. Democratic, Democratic Congresswoman Kim Schreier of the 8th District and Republican Kathy McMorris Rogers of Spokane have teamed up to help surplus food move more easily from local farms to local food banks. Their Farmers Feeding Families Act would fund states and food bank services to buy from local farmers to replenish charitable supplies while taking excess produce off the hands of the farmers. Schreier spoke about the tactics in a press conference call on Friday with fellow members of Congress. Our states know how to help us best, and, and I'm on the Agriculture Committee, and the other thing that I'm really working for is to get money instead of going through the USDA in a very sluggish way to get to our farmers to help finally get to, to uh, food banks, um, I've asked for money uh, to go straight to the state so that they can get that to farmers of all sizes and get that food directly to food banks. The USDA program is going to take months to roll out and people are lining up around the block now to get food and I think that our states can expedite that if we can get more money to them. An EPA grant will help examine several Wenatchee Valley properties for possible contaminants. This is according to, uh, including, I should say, the downtown Chelan County PUD headquarters. The Chelan Douglas Regional Port Authority won a $600,000 grant last week to assess the PUD property, which will be uh, set aside in favor, of course, new headquarters. They'll eventually be moving out to Old Station, the PUD will. The assessment will look at the PUD land plus several other parcels that could soon undergo redevelopment where toxic pollutants are likely to be present. Other target sites include Rock Island's old silicon smelter, Wenatchee's Mission Street Corridor, and a 300,000 square foot former cold storage warehouse. And finally this morning, if you're still driving around with studded tires, it's time to take care of this little problem. Uh, Washington drivers, you have until this Friday, May 15th, to swap out those studs and put your regular treads on. Of course, the original deadline was supposed to be March 31st. That's what it is traditionally, but Governor Jay Inslee and the Department of Transportation extended the deadline so drivers wouldn't have to crowd into service centers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Starting Saturday, though, if you're caught using studded tires, you face a $136 fine. And that's a look at what's making headlines on this Monday morning. Grant and the crew will be back at it to put together another newscast for you tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. And with a preview, here's Grant. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, as the COVID-19 numbers continue to fall, what does that mean for rural Washington and moving on to the next phase? After a beautiful weekend, changes coming our way to North Central Washington weather forecast, and Eric Granstrom will have a look at sports. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. We appreciate it. We also appreciate it when you get a hold of us. Uh, there are any number of ways to do it. The bottom of your screen is the key, if you will. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com, news at ncwlife.com. Dot com. That's our email address. If you go to our website, ncwlife.com, you'll see the contact us icon. It gives you a couple of options. You can just drop us a note and say hi, or you can submit a news tip 
to the news crew, or if you go to our Facebook page, you can drop us a line via Facebook Messenger. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're talking West Coast League baseball. We're going to have some kind of baseball season, summer collegiate baseball here in Wenatchee, abbreviated. We really don't know what's going on, but we have some answers from the commissioner himself, Rob Nyer. Eric's conversation with him and more coming up. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Hi. I'm Dr. Pete Rutherford from Confluence Health. I urge all of you to stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. You can provide a valuable service to all our region's healthcare professionals, our hospitals, our clinics, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, and adult family homes by donating cloth face masks and gowns to our efforts. If you are able to sew some masks or a gown, there are instructions online at the Chelan Douglas Health District. You can contact the Health District or the Confluence Foundation, and they will arrange to collect them and distribute them to where they are needed. We are fortunate that this is a community that cares about all of us. We will get through this coronavirus together by helping each other. Thank you and be well. Aging and Adult Care offers many in-home care options and services for seniors and family caregivers. But did you know they also offer free in-home delivered meals? Aging and Adult Care has expanded its program for home delivered meals to help elderly and vulnerable adults at this challenging time. If you are in need of prepared meals or know someone who could benefit, call Aging and Adult Care for more information about free home delivered meals. Call 509-886-0700. We have some clouds and some sun, 55 degrees. We'll be in the mid 70s with some clouds and some sun, but then the clouds will be uh, prominent for the rest of the week until we get to Friday. We'll do the forecast one more time before the show's over. Sports, the West Coast League announcing late Friday it will be delaying the start of the summer collegiate baseball season by a month or so anyway. West Coast League Commissioner Rob Nyer said with Bellingham dropping out a few weeks ago and the recent declarations in Oregon and British Columbia that they had to make the tough decision to at least delay the upcoming season. And it hasn't been clear for throughout this crisis, this pandemic, what the right thing has been on a day-to-day -day basis because so many things change every day. Uh, but the weight of the announcements from not only the state of Oregon, the state of Washington, but also British Columbia just made us realize that even if we're able to play some baseball somewhere this season in the Northwest, which remains our goal, it wasn't going to be a West Coast League season with, <clears throat> with eight or 10 or 12 teams playing a, 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 a fairly uniform schedule. That just isn't going to happen. So we, that's where, where, where we are right now. Bellingham announced a couple of weeks ago they wouldn't be fielding a team this year because they didn't have a stadium to play in. They closed the stadium because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nyer said the league is bracing for the possibility, anyway, of also losing Bend and Corvallis in the south and Kelowna and Victoria in the north alongside Bellingham. And that leaves seven teams to try and put together some semblance of a baseball season. The commissioner says they got to be creative. But I can imagine a situation where Wenatchee and Yakima Valley and Walla Walla would just sort of play each other back and forth in almost a month long tournament. It's just, a, just an idea. Um, I could see one uh, city hosting a bunch of games. All the games take place in that one ballpark. I mean, we're all trying to be creative here and come up with ways uh, essentially to allow players to, to get the work in that they need. Um, it seems quite unlikely that we're going to have full ballparks, right? That's the biggest sticking point, I think, is how can we, how can we play baseball without 2,000 people in the stands? Because it doesn't like that's going to be allowed any time this summer, or at least certainly not in the middle of the summer. Um, I mean, in Oregon, for example, the governor has essentially said there will be no large, no, no public gatherings, no sporting events with spectators at all until October. Well, so how do you make that work? And our teams uh, are looking at all sorts of options, but at this point, it's just really difficult to, to say what those, what those would be. 
One thing that is for sure is that there should be plenty of players uh, to choose from. Naira says it started when the Cape Cod League and other similar collegiate leagues around the country announced they weren't going to play baseball at all in 2020, coupled that with the loss of the collegiate baseball season. And there's a lot of collegiate baseball players out there who are itching to play some baseball. Then when other leagues begin canceling, guess where those players go? They go to the leagues that haven't canceled yet, like ours. So uh, if we were able to have a season, a real season, um, it would have been the best season we've ever had, talent-wise, because players from all these other good leagues were looking for places to play. Um, getting players would, would be the least of our issues this season. Now, traveling uh, from state to state or from country to country, that would have been tough. Uh, maybe lining up enough host families would be tough, but uh, all of our teams have been hearing from the players for weeks. We'll play. We want, we need to play. Friday's announcement uh, by the West Coast League to delay the season uh, after that when actually Apple Sox owner Jose Oglesby said he's committed to having baseball here in the Wenatchee Valley. This summer he issued a statement and it goes something like this. Uh, we would not exist without our great fans. We will have baseball in Wenatchee this year. I will exhaust every possible opportunity provide, to provide a creative and entertaining product this summer. It may be different than previous seasons, but we intend to celebrate summer with our town's favorite sport once again in 2020 when the time is right. End quote. Be sure to tune in uh, tomorrow morning. Wake up in Anchee Valley. We're going to have Eric's entire conversation with Rob Nyer. And I will be Skyping a little bit later on this week with the Wenatchee Apple Sox themselves to find out exactly their plans going forward for summer collegiate baseball. Seattle Mariners posted a special Mother's Day video from several of their players uh, yesterday. I know it's a day late, but it's still a pretty cool message. And it's a pretty cool video. Check it out. My mom is just endless support. No matter where you are, no matter what you need, she's there. She always has been. She's on top of it. She's the scheduler, the planner, the momager, as I like to call them. Growing up with my you know, mom being obviously one of the central figures in my family, her discipline and her kind of guidance throughout my life has helped me immensely. Uh, just always being there for me, her care, her love, uh, and then being hard on me at times too. It's something I really cherish. My mom probably had the biggest impact with me for baseball. She was uh, always out there, you know, when I was a little kid throwing, the, throwing fly balls and, you know, out, out in the front yard, uh, you know, hitting both ball and things like that. So I'm glad to uh, have her as a mom. My mom was uh, the rock star of our family. She got us dressed, she bought us cleats, she drove us to practice. And, uh, you know, she's always there for you, uh, when, you know, when you're out in the field and you can look in the stands and see her. And that was, uh, that was always special to me. Mom teaches me patience. Just her always being such a positive person, a strong person, you know, on a daily basis, I kind of try to be an image of that, you know, as best as I can. My mother's support means the world. Everything that I do, I try to emulate after her, try to make her proud. So to be able to go throughout my career and get her to be able to come to games and me to be able to give support whenever I can and give back to her, I feel like I owe her the world. My mom's played a huge role on, on me, you know, mostly as a person, as a ball player as well. Um, I remember specifically, you know, growing up and she's, you know, eight months pregnant with my sister and I'm throwing a bullpen and she's sitting on a seed bucket uh, in the front yard. So, I mean, she, she's played a huge role and, you know, supported me the entire way and, uh, you know, it's really been a great, you know, role model for me to grow up with. Happy Mother's Day to especially my mom and all the other moms out there, including my wife, Caroline. I'd like to wish my mom, Kelly Murphy, and all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day and I hope you guys have a great day. Happy Mother's Day, Mother, and um, happy Mother's Day to all the other mothers out there in the world. I wish you guys the best. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much and can't thank you enough for uh, everything you do for our entire family. To my mom and to all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. Mom, I love you. To all the mothers out there, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. We wish we could give you the world. So I just say thank you, and I say let's have a great Mother's Day and every day for the rest of the year. Thank you. Good stuff from the Mariners. And finally, a look at what we have on tap this week. Sports-wise, on the NCAA Live channel, we have a number of great games of our past. It begins tomorrow night. We've got girls volleyball from September of 2016 between Wenatchee and Chelan. Thursday night's hockey night is another game from that magical playoff run in 2018. That's when the Wild took on the Prince George Spruce Kings. Friday is a replay from a very cold night last October. That's when Cashmere hosted Cascade and girls soccer. We're still warming up from that. Then on Saturday, we'll bring you a bunch of baseball. 
with Wenatchee hosting Moses Lake from uh, May of 2017, and then the Wenatchee Apple Sox and the Portland Pickles from last July. Great games of our past continues uh, on the NCAA Live channel. And those are just some of the games that people are not playing at the bottom of the hour. Uh, the Obscure Holiday, I had three to choose from. Today is National Twilight Zone Day. So I was a, kind of a fan of the Twilight Zone. I was more of an, the Outer Limits. That was kind of my kind of sci-fi show back in the day when I was a kid. Today is National Foam Rolling Day. I have no idea what that means. So we're going to go with National Eat Whatever You Want Day today. And that's today. There you go. Just dig in. Uh, I have found, it took me a little bit of homework, but I found the full ranking of foods that Americans would eat every day if there were no consequences for eating this particular kind of food. And your top 10 is number 10, chips, number nine, cake, number eight, donuts, number seven, french fries, number six, anything made of chocolate, uh, number uh, five, tacos, yeah, uh, number four, ice cream, number three, hamburgers. Again, this is a list of all the foods that you would eat if there were no consequences for just stuffing your face with the stuff. Number two, pasta. Number one, pizza. Eat whatever you want today, which is every day for me. I, okay. That's my kind of holiday. I know I don't like to do the food holidays, but sometimes I can't resist. Uh, it is May 11th. This is 228 years ago today on this day in history. Uh, he was the very first European ever to go into the Columbia River. His name is Robert Gray, and he did it on this date. Uh, back in 1782, 228 years ago, the first guy to actually find the Columbia River was a British captain by the name of John Mears. Uh, they, he heard there was a rumor, and in 1788, he looked around, he said, there's not a river anywhere. He named Cape Disappointment, however. He did not know that Cape Disappointment was the mouth of the river. He didn't, didn't think there was a river there, so Bob took off. Uh, next down the line was George, George Vancouver of the Royal Navy. Uh, he thought, well, this may, be the, this may be a river here, but he said, you know, my buddy, uh, my buddy Johnny Mears, he says there's no river here, so George took off. He went up, the, he went up north and hung around Vancouver for a little while. And finally, um, Bob Gray, and he met up. He met up with George Vancouver, and he said, I'm looking for the river. And George said, we looked in, there's no river. And he goes, well, I'm going to go back and look again. And he went back and looked again, and sure enough, there was the Columbia River. His uh, name of the ship was the Columbia Rededeva. And that's how the Columbia River got its name. By the way, they uh, left. They got about 13 miles upstream to the Columbia River before they turned around and went back. But uh, he became the first one, Robert Gray, to go, I think there's a river here. Let's check it out. Happened on this date, May 11th, 1792. And happy birthday, Minnesota. Minnesota is 162 years old today. We always do the uh, states when they enter the Union. And Minnesota was admitted as the 32nd state of the Union on the state in 1858. It's known as the land of 10,000 lakes, but there's actually about 11,000 lakes in Minnesota. I don't think they've ever bothered to count every one of them. More than half of the state's population, 57% of the population of the state of Minnesota, lives in the greater Tri City, in the greater uh, Twin Cities area uh, in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Minneapolis is the coldest major city in America. It has between 23 to 25 days. Each river, each winter, when the temperature dips below zero, it gets cold in the Twin Cities in the wintertime. Happy 162nd birthday to Minnesota. And speaking of birthdays, a couple of musical legends, Irving Berlin, the great American songbook. Uh, you put Irving Berlin at the top. He was born in the state in 1888. He was a Russian. He emigrated to the United States when he was five years old. Uh, became a pretty fair songwriter. Yeah. Uh, Easter Parade, putting on the Ritz, cheek to cheek, White Christmas, Happy Holiday, God Bless America, anything you can do I can do better, there's no business like show business, the whole nine yards, Irving Berlin lived a long and fruitful life, lived to the age of 101, was born in the state in 1888, and Eric Burden is 79 years old, the original lead singer of The Animals, then he went solo, then he hooked up with a young group out of California named War. And he's still out there, he's still performing, and he's still around. Eric Burden, 79 years old today. Gonna take a break, Mike McNaughty's got an opinion that I had a chance to catch up with Tom Knees, our good friend, Executive Director of Serbo Nancy Valley, to find out how his organization is making it through this pandemic. They're doing what they can. We'll catch up with Tom when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Valley on the NCW Live channel. Water is essential to living. 
from clean drinking water for good health to clean water for your pool or spa. Central Washington Water, your water experts. With whole home water filtration systems for your home's best water. Products and supplies to keep your pool and spa water crystal clear to a full parts department. Count on Central Washington Water for expert help. Shop screen to screen. Come in or call about a backyard consultation. Central Washington Water, your water care professionals. AC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old-fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from 8 to 3, wildaboutberries.com. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, there's no comprehensive solution to school shootings. There's no one thing that if we do that one thing, it will guarantee to stop or even significantly deter someone intent on murdering school children. Deterring school shooting is going to take a wider ranging approach, much of it dependent not on government intervention, but on community involvement. This horrific situation, the murder of our children, is going to take each one of us being willing to stop our knee-jerk emotional reactions, ending the blame game, and most importantly, stop waiting for the government to act and instead to ask ourselves, what can I, what can we, what can we in this community do to help provide an answer? This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <laughs> love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. Why run all over town when you can get the financial services you need under one roof? The location is 521 Chelan Street right here in Wenatchee. Accounting solutions for success. Insurance from trusted choices. Real estate, the power of the edge. Personal, professional, preferable. It's all right here. Get the edge on your financial needs. Now available in Chelan as well. Get more information at augustedge.com. Badger Mountain Brewing is proud to announce the grand opening of our new kitchen. Come try out our new menu featuring fabulous steaks, prime rib, gourmet burgers, and seafood grilled up by experienced meat master, Chef Galen Goodman. To complement your mouth-watering meal, Badger Mountain Brewing features 14 in-house crafted beers, an alcohol-free root beer infused with 11 different herbs and spices, three different ciders, and a great wine selection. Don't miss out on the best meats and the best brews down at Badger Mountain Brewing, located at 1 Arondo Avenue across the tracks from the Pibus Market. And Dan Coates has been way too long since we checked in with Tom Knees. Tom is a regular contributor to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. He, of course, is the executive director and has been for some time at Serve Wenatchee Valley. Uh, the last time, Tom, you and I talked, you had just moved into your new place on Arondo. Life was normal. 
and then it wasn't anymore. So I guess the first thing uh, for us to talk about, how has Serve Wenatchee Valley been reacting to the, to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, Tom? Well, we had, um, you know, initially back in February uh, when news was sort of sort of coming out. You know, this is this was pre uh, stay home, stay safe uh, orders. We we had uh, put in place a, a pandemic kind of emergency response, and we had four steps uh, or stages of that. And so we started with uh, you know sanitizing hands and keeping the office open and creating a little bit of distance when folks walked in uh, and then we jumped from from stage one to stage four uh, overnight <laughs> we sort of skipped right over stage two and three as so many folks did uh, in, in our community uh, but during that time we we knew that food security was going to be an important um, uh, part of uh, the response during uh, during this time it's it's been a really important part of uh, of our outreach to families we about 60 percent of the families we serve on a regular basis uh, we help them with food uh, and or non-food so we know that it's a significant part and so uh, we started to explore ways we moved uh, all of our food banks uh, we have five food banks out in the community so we moved those all into our serve Wenatchee office and served for a short period of time out of our office. Uh, then uh, when everything shut down, um, we had a conversation with uh, uh, with the folks at Town Toyota Center. Uh, they, they had uh, reached out and said, hey, how can we help? And so we um, were able to navigate through with them and, and talk to them about uh, the possibility of using that space as a food distribution center. Uh, interestingly, I got that call on a, I can't remember, it was on a, Tuesday, I don't remember the day. But that same day, uh, I read an article uh, where the Community Action uh, Council, who is really our largest food distributor uh, in the two county area, uh, was changing their whole program and needing additional space. And uh, and so ding, the light bulb came on and uh, reached out to Alan and the crew over there at Community Action. And then we did a walkthrough. And that's sort of where, where that started. And so our immediate uh, you know, response to this was, you know, closing our office, creating distance, but also responding to the immediate need of, uh, of food um, that we we knew was coming at that time and certainly has proved itself to be true. So I'm going to go out on a limb here, Tom, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. My guess is you've never been busier at Serbonanche Valley, and not only that, you're probably serving clients who you've never served before as we work our way through this crisis. Am I, am I correct in that assumption? Yes and no. It, it's been kind of an interesting journey because, yes, in the sense that that we're busy because the you know we jumped our food distribution from somewhere between 50 and 100 boxes of food a week up to over 300 boxes a week, um, and doing the drive-through food uh, you know food bank. Um, so that part has been busy, but with our office being closed, we have not seen uh, the traffic and the foot traffic into the office. We are taking all of those. Uh, appointments by phone call. Um, a lot of folks have, you know, have received some stimulus, you know, cash through this time, uh, unemployment, and so there was an there was a real peak at the very front end. Then it kind of leveled off just a little bit, but uh, but we know that uh, the uh, the financial um, crisis. Uh, as a result of this are going to last for months, um, you know, down the road. And so that's what we have been preparing for. So we've been um, continuing to do phone conversations. You know, as you perhaps are aware, uh, the governor put into place a no eviction uh, order. You know, so uh, evictions were no longer um, a, a problem. However, compiling rent is. And, uh, and so once the restrictions of eviction are lifted, there's still going to be a backlog in many families. Uh, and like you said, the new families that we are serving is, uh, is huge because there are folks that, uh, that have been working uh, at their jobs for many years, and all of a sudden now they find themselves uh, in a need uh, and navigating through the, the process uh, you know, has been has been challenging for folks. So we continue to be as relational as we can. You know, we talk about social distancing, 
we really uh, like the term physical distancing because we still are socially connected. It's just in a very different way. As soon as this uh, crisis uh, really became a full-blown crisis, I had a lot of viewers uh, reach out to me via via social media, via emails and stuff, saying, "How can we help? How, we have the wherewithal. I'm okay financially. How can I help the less fortunate in our Wenatchee Valley? What conduit do I use? What do we do?" Tom, for those people who can help serve Bonanche Valley and the Community Action Council with the great Alan Walker, how, how can they help you right now? What, what's, the, what's your biggest need? You know, our, our biggest need uh, right now is we've, we've got two different ways that folks have been giving funding to serve Wenatchee. Well, actually three, because they have been supporting our general fund, which is the, the general fund is ways that we keep open as a business. They keep the lights on and keep us here. Uh, but um, we've also had a COVID-19 um, response, uh, and we've also had a food um, response. And so some of the food uh, has come in through donations from either businesses or individuals. We've got a quarantine area at the Town Toyota Center, and we receive food donations from noon to one on Monday through Thursday. And so, you know, if you're at a grocery store and you've got a couple of extra things that you could pick up and bring by, then we we weave that into our distribution um, the, the week after it comes in. Um, the food, uh, we've had generous um, you know, folks around this community that have donated to the food, which is, uh, which is amazing. That, that allows us to be able to procure and, uh, and buy the food items that, uh, that we need to continue this. Uh, it also is going to help us in the future um, because once we kind of emerge out of here, when, one of our biggest fundraisers uh, in terms of food of the year is the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. And we receive, you know, somewhere between six and eight tons of food um, a year at that food drive. Now, right now, we don't know if that's going to happen. And so that food is going to uh, be able to serve for a long time. But the other side is the COVID-19 response. That COVID-19 response is one that we, uh, both of them are restricted. And so we use those as restricted funds. So 100% of those donations are in a restricted fund or used. But the COVID-19 allows us to use those funds a little uh, more broadly because we can use it for food if we need to. Uh, but we can also use it for rent assistance and our layoff triage program. Right now we've got you know, folks that are layoff and they're maybe not getting their, uh, their unemployment check or there's a number of folks in our community that don't qualify for unemployment uh, for, for one reason or another. And so we are providing assistance for those folks that just need that uh, gap filled right now. And then we're also going to use that for rent assistance uh, down the road as, uh, you know, over the next six months, you know, we've, we've got a program we're putting in place where we're going to provide a rent subsidy, uh, for instance, for uh, up to six months, you know, period of time based on the, you know, family's needs. And so to come alongside of that family and take a little bit of pressure off for a longer period of time and allow, uh, you know, families to get the, the footing underneath them for a period of time. And so going on our Serve Wenatchee website and donating through that COVID-19 response uh, is, is the most broad, gives us the most broad use of, of those fundings to respond uh, to the needs that um, that are coming to us, flexibility is, is very much the key. So you don't you're not boxed into what you can and can't do with the funds that come in. Because we talk about food, but there's other things as well. There's dry goods, there's toiletries, there's things like that that people need to get by on a day to day basis. And 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 you are, for lack of a better term, part of the safety net. Yeah, yeah, we we are in that you know in that safety net. When we expanded this uh, layoff triage program and reached out to some of the local businesses, uh, that it, it's been very well received from a local business standpoint because they can reach out to their employees that are laid off and connect them with um, a, a service that can come alongside of them and help them for a period of time. So we understand how we can help you, Tom, uh, for the people out there who who need help. Tom, I was uh, we were and we've talked about this so many times in this program. There was a, a, an alarmingly large amount of households and families in the Wenatchee Valley that were one bad thing away from uh, having problems. Johnny falls down in, in the playground, breaks his arm, hospital bill, car accident, whatever. 
now now um, it, it's it's happening in a, in a much more dramatic and much more accelerated way for the people who need the services of Serve Wenatchee Valley. How do they how do they go about doing that? You know, if you've got a uh, if you've got a computer available to to go on the computer or your phone and just uh, go to Serve Wenatchee. Uh, dot org. Scroll down the page a little bit, and there are two little buttons there. One of them is how to help, uh, and the other one is how to find help. And if you click on that, how to find help, that will give you direction to uh, to reach out to us. Again, our office is still um, uh, it's still closed uh, to regular traffic, but um, when when you call, we can uh, deal with and interact with you over the phone uh, and and help be able to find a path, uh, you know, to support. Uh, we, when we do support, like some of the things that we do, we will schedule a time and you can come by our office and we'll set that outside in a box and uh, and, and still maintaining that, that social distance while at the same time it's really uh, helping folks to know that they are not uh, alone in this. And, uh, and I know that there's a lot of folks that, you know that are reaching out and 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 supporting. This is an incredibly generous community. I'm I'm so proud to be part of this community, uh, Dan, because the the community at large, uh, from businesses to individuals to nonprofit organizations, uh, are are really coming together. And you know, one of the things that I've said since this thing began, I walk in at the beginning of the day and I say, "What are we going to do today?" Uh, and our staff responds. Uh, whatever we can with what we have uh, and and I've seen that over and over and over again uh, from this community and the, and their responses and so uh, this is this is how we are responding at, at Serve Wenatchee uh, but there are so many good things that are going on and and I really believe that this has the potential of releasing uh, very good things in our community while in the midst of horrible stuff. It, we are in the midst of horrible stuff, but we're going to get through this. You're, you're a man of unabashed faith, Tom. When this is all said and done and we start getting back to a somewhat life, somewhat normal, who knows how long it's going to be, what are you going to take away from all this, Tom? Uh, well, the, there's, the, there's a couple of things that I, I really see um, as, as taking place over our community. Um, I, I really think that <clears throat> we have the potential or, or, or have as a culture to be really connected to uh, kind of event driven things. Um, and that's good. But when the event becomes the main thing and people that you are participating in the event become the secondary thing, um, then I, I think that's maybe a challenge for us, um, you know, culturally. W one thing that I see this doing is connecting us together as a people and as a community. And while there is, again, there's social distancing going on, it's really not social distancing, it's physical distancing. Because I see as much care uh, and concern that is being directed at one another. I know we long to uh, to embrace one another, but I think there's a there's a resetting, uh, if you will, of that. I also think that there, there's a degree to which we um, have kind of an illusion of control, uh, and and that's very easy for us to do. But any illusion of control is just that; it's an illusion. And so I, I do think that there's actually um, a a strong um, capacity inside of us to recognize that uh, that we are not in control in. Uh, in this, and and we can uh, navigate through this and be able to let go of the control and simply be able to respond. Uh, I think it can return us to a place of patience, which is very difficult. You know, 400 years ago, uh, when they wanted to build a cathedral, do you want to know the first thing that they did? They planted cedar trees. And then the cedar trees had to wait 80 years to grow up and cut, and then it took another 150 years to build it. And so we have become such an impatient culture that it's now oriented. And I think that's the other thing that has, this has the potential of doing is, is creating a patience and a, and a trust in the process um, in us that can have a longer look perhaps at what is the greatest good for the most people for the longest period of time instead of 
uh, what is good for me right now and uh, in this moment. And I think that I think that's a profound shift. Uh, and that is a great way to end this conversation, Tom. That's that's powerful stuff. And I agree with you 100. percent We all breathe the same air, but um, in our microwave society, this may, maybe when this is all said and done, we're going to be better human beings towards our our fellow man. That's that's my that's my hope. Anyway, so. Me too. Tom, it's always great to see you. Uh, I wish we could do this in person. Again, uh, servwenatchee.org. It's all there, what Tom talked about, how you can help, how you can uh, use the services of Servwenatchee Valley. Servwenatchee.org is the website. Very handy. Tom Dees, it's, it's good to see you, my friend. Don't be a stranger. If you need our help, you know where to find me. All right. Great to see you, Dan. I'm thinking of you, Tom. Okay. Thank you. Lord Take care. Bye-bye. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow. We have live bands to rock the night away, comedy to make you laugh, and if that's not enough, we have poker every Monday and Wednesday night. Club Crow in Cashmere has it all. Check out our Facebook event page for dates and times. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. The Siren Song Winery and Restaurant is open daily with a variety of fresh food and wine options for curbside pickup and delivery. Order by phone or online at 888-4657 or at sirensongwines.com. Hipsy Canyon Winery remains open for wine sales and wine club pickup seven days a week. See for yourself the most talked about view in the valley and pick up your favorite vintage to take home today. Succession Wines is in full production and open for wine sales Tuesday through Saturday from noon until four. Check out the latest releases and get wine club information today. See why Succession is the one to watch. Time to enjoy your pool. Come to Central Washington Water for the right water care products and pool supplies to keep your water healthy, clean, and sparkling. Ready to relax? Central Washington Water has a showroom of possibilities for every budget. All of us at Patriot want you to know we can deliver your filters for free in our service area. We will even text you when they are on your porch. We'll give your home a hug. Since 1932, Camp Zuniga, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Zuniga's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Zuniga today, www.campfirencw.org. Good to see you again. We are back live here from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee. Let's wrap up this program where we began this program with your weather forecast from the National Weather Service. Uh, today is one more day of not bad. Under party cloudy skies, we'll get up to 75 degrees. A little breezy at times. A west wind jumping up to about 14 miles an hour later on this afternoon. Then we make that transition. We're going to cool down. We're going to cloud up. And we're going to get a little bit of rain. Some much needed rain, we hope. Hopefully that chance of rain tomorrow will go from 60% to about 100% because we need rain. So tomorrow, lots of clouds. You can see only 64 degrees after we hit 78 on uh, Saturday and 79 on Sunday. So you can see considerably cooler weather coming our way on Tuesday with an overnight low Tuesday night of 50 degrees. And that chance of rain is really all day Tuesday and really right into Tuesday night. We're not talking about significant rainfall. We're talking about hit and miss showers, but we'll take anything we can get quite frankly. Uh, Wednesday, a slight chance of rain gets to a maybe a better chance of rain by Wednesday afternoon under partly sunny skies. We'll top off at about 70, 46 for the overnight low. Thursday, partly cloudy, chance of rain at about 30 percent, 69 for the high, 46 for the overnight low Thursday night. Friday right now looks great. Lots of sunshine, warm temperatures, high of about 75 degrees. Uh, Saturday, meh, partly cloudy, warming up a little bit, 77 degrees. And then the best chance of measurable rain right now as the computer models are in pretty good agreement that we're going to have another system come in on Sunday. Even though the temperatures would be about normal, we have an excellent chance of measurable rain on Sunday. Again, whatever rain is in the forecast for the rest of this week is kind of a hit and miss light shower kind of thing. And that's it for us. Everybody have a good and safe uh, Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.